Once upon a time, there was a little boy who loved synthesizers. He loved synthesizers so much. He loved the sound. He loved what they did. He read about people who made music on synthesizers. He dreamed about making noises on synthesizers. He listened to albums constantly that featured synthesizers. He loved synthesizers. Finally, when he was 14, he got his very first synthesizer. Through the years, he did music for thousands of projects and hundreds of records. He won awards. But he still had a dream of one day doing a concert on his ultimate synthesizer rig. It was something that had been on his mind for decades. So finally, he went to Philadelphia, where dreams come true. No, seriously, that's where dreams come true, in Philadelphia, to a place called EMIAP, the Electronic Music Education and Preservation Project. They have hundreds of pristine, vintage instruments in museum-like perfection just waiting to be played. He sent them a letter saying, hey, let's do a concert. And he sent them a drawing and said, hey, can we put these instruments from your collection together? And they said, okay. They set a date for the concert, and then he brought his friends to film it, and that's the beginning of our story. So the tricky thing about creating this concert was that I really had two goals. The first goal was I just created this album, Imaginary Trains, which I loved. I loved the music and I really wanted to get it out there. The second thing is, is that I'm not really a performer. I've played a lot. I've played in a lot of places. I've done stuff, but it's not really my thing. So like I wanted to have an opportunity to play, but I wanted to interpret my own music. I wanted to be able to take things out a little bit. So instead of coloring inside the line and trying to recreate all the sounds and textures that I did on my album, what I ended up doing was creating a keyboard rig, which gave me the flexibility to kind of go wherever I wanted to go, doing whatever I wanted to do. At the end, we came up with having a rig that had 13 keyboards in it. So the way to look at the rig is to look at it in terms of foundational keyboards. So the biggest foundation, obviously, is the CP80, the electric grand piano. Piano is pretty much my first instrument. I'm so comfortable on it, and having that be sort of a base of operations was really important. The second keyboard, the Rhodes, huge, important instrument in my music, love it. Another great instrument, the Rhodes at EMIAP is this 88 note Rhodes. It might be the nicest Rhodes I've ever played in my life, just absolutely gorgeous. The third foundational instrument might be a surprise to some people, which is the CS80. The CS80 is so flexible and you can go to so many different places with it, really wonderful instrument really helped hold down some textures that were incredibly important for the concert. And then finally, I think the most important keyboard of the entire rig, and I know people are going to say stuff to me, is the Yamaha DX1. I love the DX1. I've had one since I was a kid in college, and then again in the 90s, and now again I have an instrument which is going to be, you know, with me until my last day. It's wonderful. It's a wonderfully flexible instrument, so expressive. It is huge, but it has such a great sound. And the DX1 at EMI app is wonderful, and so it became a great home base for the show and everything that I wanted to do. So you probably noticed from my uh, my list that I have three mini mocs in my ultimate synth rig, and I, I can hear it now. You guys are all saying, "Well, who does Michael think he is, Rick Wakeman?" Well, who famously had four, sometimes even five mini mocs in his live rig for his solo shows and for his shows with Yes. 
Does he think he's Jeff Downs, who also famously had a couple of Nemogs under his Fairlight in his 80s keyboard setup? It's a great synthesizer. I love the Mini Moog. It's so versatile. It's It's been a great synthesizer since day one. So the three that I have are a reissue of the Model D from 2017, which I love. Then I have Bernie Worrell's Mini Moog, which Emmy App owns, and it's an absolutely incredible mid-period Mini Moog, incredible bass. And then the, uh, the historical one is the uh, RA Moog Mini Moog serial number 1016. So was it the 16th one made? I'm sure there's people who could tell us that. Um, it's just a very early synthesizer. It has incredible sound, harmonic distortion, the whole thing. It was a pleasure to be able to, uh, to play it. So let's have a few words about the Yamaha GX1. On many interviews, for Imaginary Trains, you know, I talked about the concert and I talked about the Yamaha GX1. The GX1 is an amazing instrument, but I'm not sure it's a synthesizer. I think it is an organ. It's set up as an organ. It's set up for performance as an organist using analog synthesizer type circuitry. It's a really cool instrument. It sounds great, but it has a quality of sound. I mean, you can change the sound, but it kind of sounds the way it sounds. And so either you really, really like it or you don't. And so people like Keith Emerson and John Paul Jones and Stevie Wonder jumped in early and you know created whole albums using the 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 synth so all of a sudden anyone after them is going to sound like them so it's a great instrument but at the end of the day i don't think it's a synth After over six months of planning and doing everything we needed to do to get the concert up and working and filmed, the biggest question I get from people is what was it like to play Keith Emerson's Modular Moog and his Hammond CX-3 and his Steinway Grand Piano? I don't even have words. Ladies and gentlemen, Keith Emerson!
Now that the concert is done and out and the recording is out, I'm very happy with how it came out. You know, you, you look at things and there's, you know, a hundred things you would play differently or do differently or, you know, whatever. But at the time, I'm really, really, really proud of the work that we did. We had a, a whole team effort and I'm incredibly grateful to the people who worked on this with me. But at the end of the day, it's a dream fulfilled. And you know, what's better than that? To, like you have a dream, you have an idea, and you go and you do it, and it comes out as good or better than you could have ever hoped.